tonight's primary elections produced some interesting, if not decisive, storylines. Dave Morris here in the Opepco studios. Tonight we saw Governor Mary Fallon easily advance to the general election to face Joe Dorman on November 4th. We entered the night expecting a close race for state school superintendent and some questions about one of the two Republican U.S. Senate seats. Turns out both races were called early. Nick Tragakis has joined us throughout the evening with reports from the newsroom. Nick, let's look at the headlines and let's start with that U.S. Senate race. Yeah, this is the one that uh, everyone expected to be the most contentious. Um, maybe that in the state superintendent race, sure. but for the Senate race, uh, it ended up being not much of a race. Um, on the Republican side, James Lankford, uh, fairly early in the night, uh, was called, called for the win. Uh, now, 10 o'clock, uh, almost all of the precincts are reporting statewide, only maybe about a dozen out still, and Lankford was pulling about 57% of the vote. Shannon was down in second place at 34. So, uh, James Lankford, Many people expected a runoff, but he now essentially sails through to the uh, general election. And we had a chance to speak with our man in Washington, Chris Castile, earlier tonight about Langford's win. I, I really wasn't. Uh, you know, in the last, uh, I don't know, a few weeks or so, I, I've kind of felt like Langford could, could win this without a runoff. Um, at least that he had a path to do it, you know, with the strong base that he has in central Oklahoma, and then, of course, you know, the, the network that, that he automatically has from all of his time at the, at the Falls Creek Youth Camp. Um, and, he, and he had a decent amount of money, and in the last couple of weeks, he had momentum, I think, from uh, Senator Tom Coburn, who they're running to replace, um, got involved kind of on his behalf without actually endorsing him, jumping to his defense about some of the you know, negative ads that were run against him by uh, outside groups that were involved in this race. I was not, however, expecting Langford to get 57%. I was thinking it might be more in the range of 51, 52, somewhere in there if he could do this without a runoff, but uh, it, it was a landslide. Tonight, this campaign is over, but our cause remains, and the fight definitely continues. We must remain committed to the ideas of liberty, and we must keep fighting for the conservative cause. And it starts right here in Oklahoma. We must get rid of Harry Reid. That means we have to send Republicans to the Senate, and that Republican is James Langford, and he 100% has my support tonight. Let's talk about the race to fill Langford's seat. It was pretty close tonight. That's one where you want to talk about, uh, you know, Chris mentioned a, a large number of candidates in the U.S. Senate race. There were also several candidates in the Republican primary to replace Lankford, and those vote totals kind of bear out when you look at the way that race shaped up. Former State Senator Steve Russell will advance to the Republican uh, runoff, 26% of the vote only. He's going to face former Corporation Commissioner Patrice Douglas with 24% of the vote. So you can imagine that other 50-some-odd percent of the vote was really parceled off to a bunch of other candidates. Uh, it's really a, ra a rather low vote total to see people advance to a runoff with only 26 and 24 percent. But that's the way the cookie crumbles. Those two will advance. They're going to have to face a uh, Democratic challenger, both with a couple name candidates. In the fifth side uh, for the Democrats, Tom Guild is going to square off against Al McCaffrey. Al McCaffrey, uh, former state senator and the first openly gay state senator in Oklahoma. He's now advanced to the runoff on the Democratic side in the 5th District. That'll be interesting to see. The, uh, the runoff that uh, Nick is mentioning here is on August 26th. In that interview that, I, uh, that we spoke with Chris Castile there for just a second ago, he was mentioning typically in the runoff you have even less voter participation, so the turnout will be very critical for those candidates. Definitely, yeah. You know, you're going to see, uh, you would expect a very targeted approach by the candidates in the runoff. They're going to go to their analytics. They're going to go to who they think for sure are regular voters for that type of election and try to hit those people hard with a lot of, uh, you know, targeted marketing and try to get them out to the polls. Well, one of the more interesting uh, high-profile races uh, tonight was the state school superintendent race, but it didn't turn out to be much of a race, as it turns out. Uh, it, that's, a, that's a perfect way to describe it. You know, this is one um, in the, in the lead-up, in the television campaign. Uh, it's hard to find a race that, that got nastier in advertising on the TVs than the race between Joy Hoffmeister and Jana Barisi, the incumbent superintendent. And this looks like now uh, it'll be a one-term deal for, for Jana Barisi. Not only uh, did Hoffmeister beat her, Hoffmeister took 57% of the vote in that race, 
Uh, Barisi came third in the race, losing to Brian Kelly of Edmond, who beat her by percentage points, about 21.4 to 21 percent. Um, Barisi gave a, a rather terse concession speech, warned people that they, they weren't getting the candidate they thought they were getting, so kind of strong words there as she was defeated tonight. Uh, meanwhile, Hoffmeister advances on with a pretty solid win, 57% of the vote, and we also have a runoff on the Democratic side of the superintendent race. John Cox will be going up against Frida Deskin. So we will have uh, Hoffmeister having to wait it out a little bit to find out who she'll face in the general election. Nick mentioned the uh, concession speech by Barisi. We have a clip from that speech. When I ran for state superintendent four years ago, I knew reform would be strongly resisted by some members of the education establishment. That is certainly proven to be true. But our children deserve better. And I am proud to have served as their advocate. Um, I am so grateful for all of those who have put in hours and hours of work to explain to people uh, what is at stake. It is the future of the children of Oklahoma. And it is time for us to have leadership that is inclusive and collaborative because it is only going to be that kind of new leadership that will successfully move our state forward for our school children. That was Joy Hoffmeister from Her Watch Party. You can find the complete videos of Janet Barisi and Joy Hoffmeister's speeches online at newsok.com. Nick, let's go over some of the other headlines that the Oklahoma's working on tonight. Yeah, it was a it was a good night overall to be an incumbent Republican in most circles. Uh, in your your congressional races, Mark Wayne Mullen in the second district, Frank Lucas in the third district, Tom Cole in the fourth district, all skated to easy uh, Republican primary wins. Mary Fallon skated to an easy Republican primary win. Uh, Insurance Commissioner John Doak, same story, easy win, 77% of the vote. Um, one race that a lot of people were watching that also heated up in, in the sort of television uh, wars was the race for Corporation Commissioner, uh, Hyatt against Brandon. That race was pretty close with Hyatt a four point edge, 52 to 48, looking like probably with how few precincts there are left that, that, that Hyatt will hold on and win that one. That turned a little bit nasty in the uh, in the television commercial campaign coming down the stretch. Uh, but overall, you know, good night to be a Republican. Uh, there was a lot of attention on the Republican primaries, a lot of, you know, what would appear to be stronger candidates coming from the Republican side, and a lot of them managed to really skate by uh, without having to probably pour a lot of resources into the race. Nick Tragagas from the Oklahoma's Newsroom. Nick, thanks so much for your time tonight. I know uh, you're pulling double duty tonight from the, the news desk, but also coming up here to, uh, to be on the Opupco Studios desk. We appreciate that. No problem. All right, complete coverage and analysis can be found on Wednesday's Oklahoman and online at newsok.com, including the overall election results from every race. You can also find videos from James Lankford, T.W. Shannon, Joy Hoffmeister, and Janet Barisi from their watch parties. That'll be available later tonight on newsok.com and Wednesday morning. Big thanks to my online ninjas from Alan Herzberger's crew, Tiffany Gibson and Matt Carney. And thanks to my video crew tonight, Todd Frazier, Paige Dillard in the control room, and videographers Kyle Roberts, Tim Money, Damon Fontenot, Alex Strom, and Chris Griffin in the field. Thanks, everybody, and have a great night.